coming up on the ABS Evening News. Health officials provide more details about the services being provided on the Chinese hospital ship, the Ark Peace. Beneficiaries also react. Public education initiatives intensify ahead of referendum on the country's final court of appeal. Government announces fresh moves to address concerns over beach access. And the country's cultural expressions take pride of place as independence activities continue. The ABS Evening News begins now. The local evening news is brought to you by Nagico, local agents, Bryson's Insurance. Good evening, it is Tuesday night. Welcome to the evening news here on ABS, Antigua's News Authority. I am Terry Andrew. And I'm Alejandra Robinson. Thank you so much for joining us. We begin this evening with news that the Chinese military hospital ship Ark Peace has commenced seeing patients. The ship, which arrived Monday, is docked at the Nevis Street Pier. Over 3,000 nationals have registered for services on board the vessel. Sherilyn Beza sat with Chief Medical Officer Dr. Rhonda Seely Thomas today. We do apologize for that uh, missing audio on that report. We'll get back to it a little bit later on. But meanwhile, we spoke with patients who had a chance to benefit from medical services on the ARC piece on Tuesday. The prognosis was good. It was good. It relieved all my concerns and fears. And I guess what I can do is if I want a second opinion to check and see if what they said was accurate is to get one here locally from my doctor. So it was good. It was a nice experience. All right. So um, what were you checking for? I went for dermatology. Oh. Skip. It was a good experience. Um, it was an easy process. I went to check my eyes. They said um, it's much better to take eye drops than to remove the flesh because it's likely to go back after a while. So he gave me some eye drops to treat the situation. They told me in Jamaica that it's a 50-50 chance if I would be able to see from it again. Okay. And then when I went to treat that, they told me that there was a scar at the back of the eye. Mm -hmm. That caused me to see what I'm seeing. Mm -hmm. So when the Chinese came here three weeks ago, I went back to them. For me, for second opinion, mm -hmm. the result is the cornea is bad. Okay. My problem is I had a slight a high heart rate. He gave me some uh, tablets just to okay. ease it down because I suffer with a, another condition which in the certain condition could have caused it. So they gave me some um, a tablet, some medication to slow it down a little. Otherwise than that I'm fine. What I experienced there is very quick and efficient. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean the Chinese are doing well. I mean they saved me a, 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 a handsome change there, you know what I mean? Uh -huh. oh, where got done? The colon has And I thank the Chinese for sending that boat that I hope we could stay a little longer but uh, and let you know more Antiguans if we could get um, the benefits of what they bring in. Damaged my back very bad. Um, the doctor told me that my back is just um, it's it's like the, the joints are out in three different places. Very serious back injury. He said, well, it's almost impossible. An operation would be very dangerous for me at this time. Okay, so, so I got some medication. Okay. And you are satisfied with that? I'm satisfied because I'm skeptical about going on the, a knife at my age, really. Okay. Okay. I'm very skeptical, but I'm pleased. Now, as of this morning, over 130 people had received treatment for various ailments aboard the Ark Peace. In addition to treating patients on the ship, the team paid a courtesy call on Health Minister the Honorable Malwin Joseph. Juno Smith has more in this report. Members of the Chinese military hospital ship Ark Peace visited Health Minister the Honorable Malwin Joseph at the ministry's headquarters. Chinese Ambassador to Antigua and Barbuda, Wang Xiangming, and the Chief Medical Officer, Dr. Rhonda Seely Thomas, were also in attendance. Health Minister, the Honorable Malvin Joseph, details how important the visit of the ARC piece is to Antigua and Barbuda. China is using its wealth, its power, 
this technology to lift the world up. This is a very important thing the Chinese are doing for mankind. The minister says that in addition to the patients who are benefiting from the initiative, Mount St. John's Medical Center will also benefit. The Chinese people are probably the most organized people in the world. So apart from the, the medical care and all the other things, we are seeing a transfer of that discipline, this organizational type of quality in all the Chinese that we are learning from. Minister Joseph presented the representatives of the ship with mementos Antigua and Barbuda. The team in turn presented Minister Joseph with a plaque and a vase in a gesture of goodwill. The crew from the medical team will pay a courtesy call to the care project on Wednesday, where they will be performing a number of health checks on the residents. Janor Smith reporting for ABS News. Now on this ABS News follow-up, Zadira Jackson has successfully completed her heart surgery in Florida. The surgery was completed by the Wolfson Children's Hospital in Jacksonville, Florida, to correct the defect of two holes in her heart. This resulted in her, he her having low oxygen levels, which turned her skin a bluish purple. She'll be hospitalized for the next two to three weeks as doctors continue to assess her progress. Mauricia Jackson Williamson, the mother of baby Zadira, told our news team that the surgery was completed last week, Monday, and her daughter is now recovering. She's thankful for the government and the Ministry of Health, who came on board to cover the cost for the surgery at an estimated 25,000 U.S. dollars. Now, the government will be putting mechanisms in place to tackle the long-standing issue of access to public beaches. Residents have been complaining that more landowners have been restricting access to beaches, even though it is against the law to do so. The Physical Planning Act 2003 says there shall be at least one public land, landward access to and right of the right of for every beach in Antigua and Barbuda. In August, the Gaston Brown-led administration said the law governing access to the beaches of Antigua and Barbuda will be amendment, amended to make it stronger. Minister for Housing, Lands and Urban Renewal, the Honorable Maria Brown, gave her ministry's position on the beach access. The Ministry of Housing, Lands and Urban Renewal has been working closely with property owners who own property near the beaches of Antigua and Barbuda. This is to enable access for all. Public access is of most importance to the government of Antigua and Barbuda, and we have been reaching out to the owners of the lands so that easements are being made so that individuals are able to access the beaches at all times. Now, she says that her ministry is also working along with stakeholders to ensure that beachgoers are familiar with their public access area. We're also working with the Ministry of Public Works to ensure that these roads are accessible, clearly marked, and that individuals know that these are the places that they're able to access the beaches around Antigua and Barbuda. The beach access is number one on our list at the Ministry of Housing, Lands and Urban Renewal to ensure that all of our citizens know that the beaches are for them and that the accesses are all going to be clearly demarcated for their usage. The government does, however, want to have an amicable solution that would be acceptable by both the property owners and the residents and tourists who wish to visit the beach. Now, the Central Housing and Planning Authority is moving apace with its Land for Youth initiative. Housing Minister, the Honorable Maria Brown, says that CHAPA has already started the Land for Youth program in the Lightfoot area. At present, we are putting in the infrastructure, and so allocation will begin late December. We're also looking at Land for Youth, again in Lightfoot within the first quarter of next year and in some other areas. The Land for Youth initiative is extended to the National Housing and Urban Renewal Development Company as well, where we do have land in Donovan's that we're offering. Now, allocations for those lands are expected to begin in January 2019. Minister Brown noted that CHAPA is also dealing with developments you can purchase the land and home um, in certain areas like the North Sound area, the Follies area. We do have some still available at the North Sound area in the form of townhouses. Also, we do do regular land sales. Um, right now, we have some available in Piccadilly. Now, land is also available in Lindsay's, Jennings, Freetown, and Newfield. 
Now, employees working at the Information Ministry returned to work full-time today after working only four hours since mid-2017. ABS's Sharon Miller-Taswell continues with part two of how to address sick buildings. Good evening. Productivity can now increase as workers return to the executive floor of the information headquarters full time. Information Minister the Honorable Melford Nicholas says he now wants to make it his mission to make sure no one in Antigua and Barbuda has to work in a sick building. A 59 page air quality analysis report in 2015. Another report in 2016 and 2017 all failed. The problem, mold. And each time, employees got sick. Frequent headaches, nausea, respiratory problems, running eyes, itchy eyes, a general state of tiredness. After years of failed remediation attempts, Information Minister Melford Nicholas has given up on the first floor of the main headquarters building. I think I would have completed the cycle of uh, turning uh, a bad situation around. It has taken quite a bit of time to do it, Sharon. Today, a milestone. Employees return back to the newly renovated executive floor full time. But Minister Nicholas is not stopping there. The lesson um, for me now is to not keep this a secret. Mm -hmm. Buildings do get sick, and I'm aware of um, other private sector buildings that have gotten sick, other quasi government agencies, the Social Security, I know that that building became sick some time ago, they've had to move out as well. Minister Nicholas says, according to the many air quality reports, air conditioning systems are the roots of the problem. There are issues related to building. And I can tell you, with the air conditioning systems, it's, it has to do with three levels. He says the design of the air conditioning system needs to accommodate to the size of the building and the number of occupants. The second aspect of it has to do with the maintenance. The, there needs to be uh, filtration systems to be able to filter the air and the different type of filter systems that can act as uh, a mitigation level to kill the spores. The, the mold spores. And of course, there is the management of the air conditioning systems. Minister Nicholas says employees changing the thermostat can contribute towards creating a sick building. That's a mistake yes. because as the temperature varies, right. that itself can create a humid environment True. for mold to grow. So once the humidity levels ticks above 50 percent, it's going to create an environment for mold to grow. Tell me that this is an issue because we do have high humidity here in Antigua. Are there any regulations in place that maybe someone is going around checking to make sure that what you're talking about is being implemented? I want this to be um, a, a signal, um, a benchmark learning um, experience for um, the entire community. Minister Nicholas says although the executive floor is deemed healthy, he's going to have another air quality test conducted. For ABS News, I'm Sharon Miller-Taswell. Thanks, Sharon. Now, Agriculture, Fisheries and Barbuda Affairs Minister, the Honorable Dean Jonas, has thrown his full support behind acceding to the appellate jurisdiction of the Caribbean Court of Justice. The minister made an impassioned appeal for electors in his St. George constituency to vote in favor of the CCJ in the November 6 referendum. It can be an issue where they're concerned about the quality of the judges, because we have the, some of the best judges in the world. So our judges are world class. So what is the concern? Oh, the magistrate court is this, and, and political interference is that, and some real foolish arguments. Come on, we need to transition. And the same kind of arguments used to hear when we're transitioning our education system. Right. So I'm encouraging the people of St. George. I'm giving you good advice today. Let us support the CCJ. Let us move forward with it so that our country and our people can be proud of our accomplishment going forward. Now, the public education effort ahead of the November 6th referendum on the country's final Court of Appeal is continuing in earnest. The most recent event was a forum at the Methodist Church Hall uh, last night. It featured speakers who both, who both proponents and opponents of the move toward the appellate jurisdiction of the CCJ. Chairman of the Reparation Support Commission, Dobri Nomad, was the first to address the gathering. Omar said he rejects the notion that the country should remain with the Judicial Committee of the Privy Council. It surprised that participation in another regional organization is proving difficult, providing some of us who verbally agree with the move to deeper independence with a platform 
for strange arguments. We admit that we find it strange that some who place confidence in Caribbean thought about our health and education and have faith in the control of our airspace, our banking and trade policies, that those persons now find it difficult to place confidence and faith in the ability and integrity of Caribbean people. Ahmad, who is also vice chairman of the CARICOM Reparations Commission, says he is finding the arguments against the move to the CCJ very difficult to understand. It's now find it difficult not only to accept our own, the CCJ, but are prepared to make curious excuses for not honoring the generational imperative that faces us. We are so he says the Reparations Commission supports the massive public education program on the issues of justice and important role that a regional organization like the CCJ is poised to fulfill. Now, meanwhile, Pearl Quinn Williams agrees that Antigua and Barbuda should adopt the CCJ as its final court of appeal, but does not believe this is the right time to do so. Quinn Williams, a member of the movement, reiterated her stance Monday night while addressing the gathering at the Methodist Church Hall. One of the questions posed to Quinn Williams was whether her stance was politically motivated. It is not about politics for me. I cannot speak for anyone else, sir. I know it's not about politics for me, and it shouldn't be for anybody else. And if you people were to come into power, whoever was to come into power and they were to go, my answer, if it was me alone and the court system, I was not satisfied that the lower courts, I saw sufficient effort to do something with the lower courts, my answer would still be the same, no, even if it's me alone. Now, in another area of interest, Shamar Yearwood has been named as the 2018 Island Scholar. As Island Scholar, Yearwood will be awarded a U.S. $20,000 scholarship annually from the Board of Education for undergraduate studies. A communique from the Ministry of Education says Yearwood was selected after reviewing the 2018 CAPE uh, Ed, Ed, EdExcel Cambridge results and rigorously applying uh, the relevant criteria for determination. Additionally, four Antiguans and Barbudans have been named as Proxim Scholarship recipients. Jerry Asker from St. Anthony's School, Sonique Phillip, Antigua State College, Lucia Elizabeth Murray, St. Anthony's Secondary School, and Yvana Ephraim, Antigua State College. They will each receive U.S. $10,000 annually towards their higher education studies. Director of Education Claire Brown has offered congratulations to the 2018 Island Scholar and the four Proxim Scholarship recipients. Now, Agriculture Minister, the Honorable Dean Jonas, is planning to make the most of government resources to boost agricultural production. The minister has been making an intensive push on backyard farming with the use of greenhouses. He wants as many residents as possible to register with the Agriculture Ministry for this venture. He also notes that he has been in contact with the Chief of Defense Staff of the Antigua and Barbuda Defense Force, Colonel Trevor Thomas. What I want to do is to contract with him, maybe to do on his property up there at Crabs. I don't know how, how much acres up there, but I know it's big. He can probably put down a good 50 to 100 greenhouses up there. Now he says the benefits of this partnership will be manifold. Not only will he be able to enhance the, um, his ability to fight, you know, provide food for his soldiers if they want to do it for food internally, but they can be a part of our agriculture program because he has the hands. He says this could also help the army make money by providing produce for the agriculture ministry. He also says community groups should contact the ministry to get involved in greenhouse farming. The agriculture minister says this project should begin in earnest within the first two months of next year. The literacy, the literary arts uh, were on display on Monday evening in an event called For Our We <laughs> For Our We Think. The event held at the Dean William Lake Cultural Center is one of the activities to mark Antiguan Barbuda's 37th anniversary of independence. ABS's Jessica Russell was at the event. I showed back, over here, people come running and a guy take off his shirt and cover me up. 
Antiguan author Joy Lawrence shared excerpts from her book, Barbuda and Betty's Hope, The Codrington Connection. Pieces on social issues were also shared. Marcella Jardine presented this spoken word. I know that there isn't enough showers that can wash away the dirt from your skin. Dear little girl, you are not to be blamed. Zara Erol presented a creative piece on a dark time in history. What's charming about bodies hanging, swaying in the breeze? I don't know what's charming about being lynched from trees. I don't know what's charming about black bodies lining the streets, mothers crying, children dying, fathers, brothers, sons. Jessica Russell, ABS News. Our senior citizens in St. John's Rural East were the beneficiaries of a program of appreciation on Tuesday. Member of Parliament, the Honorable Maria Brown, was full of praises for their contribution, and they were brimming with delight. Here's more from Tashua James. Senior citizens showed up in style, giving the young folks a taste of the old time something. The Rural East constituency celebrating their senior citizens. They flaunted fashion of the old Indies and alternative uses for combs. <laughs> Minister Maria Brown also joined in on the festivities, thanking senior citizens for their invaluable contribution to the nation. Are the fibers of our society. You are the fibers of our community. You've molded us to what we are today. You helped fight for our independence. You were there when it happened in 1981. You were present. You were celebrating with us. And we are so thankful to have you with us today to Happy share. Independence, Antigua and Barbuda. This is Tashwa James, ABS News. Hmm. I love the tune on the, the comb there, Terry. Mm. It looks like you were having a wonderful Creative, time. Creative, right? Yeah, we needed to go to that party. Uh, I, think, I think we were too young. I think we were too young for that one. All right, we'll take our first commercial break here, but for those of you viewing on Facebook Live, don't go far. Sports is next. Wendy's seek to level the one-day international series. You're watching the ABS Evening News. We'll be right back.